Welcome, 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 everybody. We are This Xbox Life, and this is episode 405, Bust Out Your Wallets. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Brun BJ633, and along with me is Mark, also known as Wingman709. Oh, didn't hear you there, Mark. <laughs> I guess He's it would speechless. be helpful if I unmuted myself so yeah. what i said was hello everybody <laughs> and uh rob also known as presar hey what's up everybody hello 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 so how, how are you guys you guys have your uh you got your wallet all ready to go packed full of cash that thing <laughs> is running away <laughs> <laughs> no, wallet is no. Empty. No. Yeah. no i don't know if you guys are like me but um I, I've asked my wife for my wallet back, and she just won't give it back to me. She's smart. <laughs> That's the beauty of digital gaming. I don't have to ask the wife. I don't have to sneak it in the door. <laughs> I click purchase. You don't <laughs> have magic to... keys there. Yeah. You know, what... what I what I'd really like to know is how you guys got the uh, direct deposit to Microsoft. No, Why I... even bother with the bank? Yeah. Well, we do have a thing called wives that <laughs> won't let us do that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what they say? It's always easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. So. Yeah, I've I've said that. Like, I've heard multiple people say that before, and I said that to my wife. You know, I was like, "Hey, this is what you know the saying is. You know, better ask for forgiveness than ask for permission." And she's like, "Nah, yeah, that won't work." <laughs> so, but digital gaming does save you from you know having to beat the mailman to the front door before they get there and drop off the packages and stuff. You just, you know, you just buy it. And if you can hide it from them, you know, not it's that the I ultimate do... in, not... it's the ultimate in uh, under the radar. Yeah. Not that I do that or anything. As I'm <laughs> waving to my wife in the other room as she's staring at me. <laughs> I was talking about what those other guys do. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm the other guys commenting do. Commenting on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's that Mark it. always hides stuff from his wife. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, uh, we are live uh, on twitch.tv slash this Xbox life. Uh, we record every Sunday or go live every Sunday uh, around you know, 10 p.m. Let's say 10 quarter after 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can join us live and, and chat and, and have a good old time. And then we wrap it all up in a nice little package and we sell it for the high value or you know the high price of zero dollars in an mp3 format for everybody out there to listen so dude i think we're gonna have to change that dude with those with all these games coming out we need some cash so we can pay for them so right. i think we might have to start charging for the show or something yeah well i'll tell you what instead of our current but, price what, 50 bucks an episode i think that's fair i say <laughs> we take our current price maybe increase it 20 percent and we'll go with that 20% first. increase. All right, that works. 20% increase of our current cost. Woohoo! <laughs> For nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, we like to start every show with what we've been playing. Uh, I think everybody's got some oh. small lists right now. But, Dude, uh, I'm going to have to hurt Rob. That better not be what I think it is. <laughs> okay. okay, well, we'll let, we'll let Rob We're have go. a virtual throwdown here in a minute. No, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> go go ahead uh go ahead rob what if what have you been playing so i played a little more forza horizon 3 demo not wait yeah of course <laughs> okay that better i, I say it better be the demo <laughs> yeah I, you know i i was looking at that stuff and okay so i obviously wasn't paying attention to the different bundles that they had and uh Actually, maybe, am, am I getting into some territory for later on? Yes, yep, yes. save it, save okay. it, save it. Okay, I'll save it for later yep. in the show. But yes, it was the demo. <laughs> then you're safe. <laughs> Begrudgingly, I played the demo. So, and I'll have to wait until Tuesday. Yep. Like everybody else. And then uh -huh. I, I played some more Kingdoms, uh, New Lands. Are we having a throwdown now? No, no, I don't even know what that is. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> so this is a really strange game. I remember watching the trailer of it because I think I talked about it maybe two episodes ago. Yeah, yep. 
Yeah, it was a really strange game. When you watch the trailer, you have no idea what this game is about. And it just is like, it just seems silly. It seems stupid. But man, this game is a huge time sink and it is hard. I play through one game and so actually, let me rephrase that. I play it. I don't play a game because I actually don't finish it and I don't do well either. But as I'm playing it, all of a sudden, it's like two, three hours later. It just, uh, yesterday I was playing it and I was on my second game and I'm like, I've got to stop. I've got to turn this thing off and I've got to go because I had a whole bunch of stuff I needed to do. But uh, basically what this game is, is you, I'll just do a quick little recap is it's a side-scrolling, almost looks like a pixel art style game, one of those older style games. Um, but the graphic graphic uh, style to it is actually kind of neat. It's actually fairly well done, even though it's not like high res or anything like that. But uh, it's a side-scrolling game where you play either a king or a queen, which seems to be random, each game chosen for you. You play a, a king or a queen that's on a horse, and you're just riding your horse left and right and you're um you're basically building a town and upgrading it eventually to like a castle or something like that and you're building your little archer outposts you're building like an economy so it's like a city building game mixed in with tower defense because the game is set uh, on a day-night schedule and every night from one side either left or right there's a horde of monsters that come out come out so as you progress in the game the game gets harder because there's more monsters and there's just been so many times where i just get annihilated you make some stupid mistake or you don't time your stuff just right they just blow through all your defenses all your guys just get decimated and you're kind of starting over and sometimes you really can't even recover from it. But this game is a lot of fun. I'm not really one for tower defense style games. They're, I mean, I like defense grid and all, but they're really not my style of games. I don't, I don't find them a whole lot of fun, but this game is unique. It's something a little different. It's definitely worth trying. And uh, I think it was only like 15 or $20 on live and, and there's a PC version. Originally it was a PC game called Kingdoms and then New Lands is kind of, I don't know if it's like an expansion or the second one of it, but it's got a little more content and I think some of the things that people complained about in the first one they fixed in New Lands. So um, that, that's the one that I've been spending a, a lot of time with uh, this past week and I'm sure I'm gonna forget all about it once Tuesday rolls around, but uh, that's about it for me. Cool. Uh, Mark, you want to go next? Sure, sure. Um, let me start out by the disappointing game I played. So I, I, I think I was dumb, spent money on the Dead Rising triple pack because I love Dead Rising 3. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And um, I can't even get past this friggin' very beginning part of, the, of Dead Rising. Um, the controls are terrible. It's just, it seems like the game's progressing time-wise, even yep. though I'm not able to even progress with a single mission. Um, really frustrated. It's probably just going to get dumped, <laughs> and not. I'm not even going to touch Dead Rising 2 or or the off the record. Um, I'll just wait and get Dead Rising 4, because uh, that'll be, I think, much more like 3, I hope. But now I might just be delaying it. Uh, I might delay Dead Rising 4 until after I hear afterwards if it's a lot like three or if they've gone back because there was discussion about it being more back to the original which i do not like so but um thankfully i have fallen in love with a free-to-play game that i just i i should i should turn my xbox on to see how much time i've actually got in this thing i've got a lot of hours in star trek online this is again free-to-play game um absolutely i'm having a blast um i have played with mars warlord um what's his new name now he's changed it a couple of times 48 i think <laughs> uh, mars warlord 48 i've played with artemis 
I have played with Wrangler Actual, who we've actually had as a guest on our show before. Um, and it's been awesome because you can go in and, and do the storylines. There's a there's a ton of gameplay in this game. There there is a storyline. Um, it's different depending if you're you know who you go if you're Romulan, Klingon, or Federation. Um, so there's different storylines, but they're long. There's I think I read somewhere there's like 135 missions or something. I mean, wow, it's it's insane. The hours I've put into this game, I'm only I've only completed two different storylines. Uh, one was the Klingons. One was I forgot what it was called. Um, it wasn't a race. It was like wasteland or something. I'm out on the Romulan storyline, um, but I'm still as my Federation character. So these are, I, I haven't changed characters or anything. I'm working my way through this, and it's like there's all these different, and there's just the list that I haven't even touched. It's huge. Um, it's just mammoth. So there's a ton of hours. I mean, if you need something to play and you got no money, because when you busted out your wallet and found out it was empty, <laughs> I can't recommend Star Trek Online enough. Um, it does not require you to pay money to play the game. It's it's not a pay to win. Um, it's if you've played Neverwinter, uh, it's the same guys. It's the same, essentially the same style of game, um, but it's all Star Trek, and it is absolutely a blast. One of the things I did this weekend was um, hooked up with the guys several different occasions. And we went into these deep space, um, I can never remember what they're called, deep space excursions or something like that. It starts with an E. But it's um, basically, you go into this event, it's a public event, you can go in with your group, and uh, that that's a little tricky, but you can get into one with your group. Um, and it's basically just space battles. That's all it is ship to ship battle and you will be fighting just waves after waves and waves of different enemies like the first one i ever experienced was just borgs just massive borg cubes and boom all of a sudden they warp in and and you're just like you're shooting them and you clear them all out and then boom another set wave warps in um and it just keeps going until you completely defeat them and then we've done ones with klingons ones with the romulans ones with the orions um just it just Oh, the Gorn we fought, the Gorn. I mean, there's just so many different kinds, and it is so much fun. And it, I found it seems to be a really quick way to rank up. Um, just this weekend, I went from a 32 to a 40, I think I'm 41 now, 40, 41, um, which is pretty darn quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, we were ranking up real fast just doing these. Um, and, and it was fun, man. <laughs> like, it's just, it is so much fun. This is like to me. This is the best part of the game. There is at times there is so much phaser fire and shields and all these buffs you can apply to your teammates. All of a sudden you've got something around you. You don't even know what it does, but it's to help you with different things. And there's these powers and there's ships and it's 360 degrees and all, every direction. And it gets sometimes you don't even know what you're just trying to get your you're looking at your shields and your hull and everything's dropping and you're like, I got to get out of the space. I got to get far enough away. No one can shoot me that my hull can try to rebuild and heal. Then I can come back and fight. And, but there's times I don't even know who I'm shooting at. I can't yeah. even tell there's so much phaser fire and photons and all these different things that wow. different colors and just your, your ships getting, you know, it looks like 18 beams of light coming at you and you don't know. <laughs> some of those are actually yours going out, but you can't tell which ones. <laughs> It's insane. So much fun. Dude, I was playing oh. I was playing Recore. Uh, I forgot to mention I played some Recore uh yesterday as well. And that's how I felt in Recore. I didn't know what was going on. I was just like <laughs> shooting at everything. <laughs> it's just like craziness. Yeah. It's, that games uh, do that. It, this one is intense. I don't I just don't recall a game that's this intense where it's like there was just so much happening that you it's it's real it's very easy to lose track of who you're targeting where what ship are you looking at where you know what's going on so you really rely on your hud a lot to you know how are your how are your shields doing and you know oh my port shields are down i better 
turn so I can let them hit me on the other side or something, you know. Um, it's You get to upgrade all your different weapons and stuff on your ships, and you can upgrade your torpedoes and your warp engines and your shields, and just it's there's a lot to it, and it is a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy it. And I'm kind of, I really wish this game would have come out this summer because yeah, I've been playing the heck out of it this whole last week. And because uh, it came out while I was out of town. And um, now it's, as of Tuesday, it's it's going to be pretty much packed away and not be played for quite a while because of everything coming out. But, oh, fun game. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it just came out on Xbox, right, recently. I mean, Right. Star, Trek, Star Trek Online's been out for quite some time, and that was before it's it was been... even free to play. And yeah, and so, but it's nice to hear people are having fun with it. I mean, that's yeah. And I mean, the so... guys that I've been playing with, we've been having a blast. And you can so... still co-op on the missions, like the story missions. Um, the only bad part is my recommendation is if you're going to jump into somebody's game, level to their level. Uh, because if you're like a higher level and you're going to go in and help someone else out, the, the enemies are going to scale to the highest leveled person in the game. So if you're a higher level, jump into someone else's game and level down to them. You will still gain XP in the background, if you will, but still tracks what your real level is and all the XP still goes to that. But you are you don't want to jump in. I had a problem at first when I started because like Mars and Artemis were so high they jump in, oh, we'll help you out. I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm a level 7 up against level 30 ships. I'm just getting destroyed. I mean, right. I didn't have a prayer. And it frustrated me, and I was just like, I can't do this. So I kind of avoided them until I got up to closer to their level. And then they're like, oh, wait, we can actually match your level. And that made a bunch of difference. So they come in as whatever level I'm at, and then everybody's equal. You know, the ships are, I'm not trying to take on these, you know, three times my skill level. And you're just not going to beat them. It's just too crazy. So, but then you can still get help in your missions, which is helpful. A lot of fun. I can't stress enough. It does have some bugs. It's got some issues I wish they would fix. Teaming up can be a pain. Uh, getting to these deep space uh, excursions or whatever they're called can be a little pain because you got to kind of watch for them. And then you got to race to them and hope you get to them before they disappear. And, um, and then you got to make sure your team's all together and you're all going to the same direction. I wish there was a little easier way to kind of connect with your buddies that are in your fleet, but it's not necessarily so simple, but it's not too bad. Just got to be a little patient with it and work together. Um, other than that, that's it. That's what I've been playing. So quick question about that. Being that it's a free-to-play game, that immediately makes me wonder, what's the catch? What What is the rub in it being... A free-to-play game and you potentially not paying anything well i think there's they give you these um as you flying around or you're on land you'll pick up loot okay some of the loot they call them like here they call them like these cardassian little boxes well what it is is you have to have a key to open it to get that key you have to buy them with real money yeah um they did the same thing in uh neverwinter they were like these little loot boxes or treasure bo treasure boxes. And I remember buying a few keys to open them up, and then they would be full of gear. But I never found anything like, oh, this is awesome. I mean, so I haven't opened one. I just delete all those things. So that's the that's the real only thing that they kind of throw in front of you that they want you to buy. Um, but yeah, I just delete them. I just destroy them when I pick them up, take them out of my inventory, and uh, I move on. Yeah. There's... There's a lot of stuff you can get, like you can buy ships and gear and uniforms and weapons and engines. And so if you don't want to put time into it, yeah, you can go out there and buy stuff. Um, a lot of people will like it, too. The, the kind of thing I look at, I've given them, I think, five bucks. Um, I'm trying to remember what I bought. Oh, I, I, I know. So when I got a ship, and I think I messed up. I didn't think I needed to, but when I bought... When I got in my third ship, it didn't appear, and I'm not sure why. Sometimes your ship appears in your dock. Sometimes it goes into your inventory. I don't understand why. Um, I think the problem is, is and I, I, if I'm right, 
it's because if your inventory is full, then your dot you can't accept the ship because your inventory is full. So it goes into your overflow. So then you got to go in and you got to clear it out. Once it goes into your actual inventory, then you can commission the ship and it appears. Well, when I got my third ship, it didn't appear where I saw the first two. And, and then I was looking and it was like, oh, you, you have so many slots. So I thought that I had to buy more slots. So I'm not 100% if I had to buy more slots for more ships. Um, you might not have to. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or I read it wrong. But I'm like, oh, I only have two slots available out of 10. I got to purchase them. So I gave them like five bucks. And then I got eight more slots for ships. But then my ship didn't appear. It still didn't show up. I was getting really mad. You can ask Mars about it. Boy, I was pretty hot. Good thing I'm not. I'm good thing I'm not in the. Uh, I wasn't on the, the old Xbox One and in the uh, TXL group, because it probably would have been banned by the admin. But um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the club. But I, I was club. ticked off, man. I was really ticked. And then he was even like, "Yeah, it kind of stinks because you just gave him money too." I said, "Yeah," and I still don't have my ship. Well, then I kept digging around and found it. But my, you know, so I, I think it was an issue. And I, I saw it one other time. Later on, the last one I picked up was the same thing. Like, where'd my ship go? So I went to the inventory, and I, it was in the overflow again. So I think that's why. So I don't know if I had to spend that money. I, I might have had 10 slots opened automatically. Um, but um, I don't know. So I, I bought more open slots to get more ships. But I think I'm up to, like, six or seven ships now anyways. But, oh, wow. um, yeah, and then you can dock ships and... You can do different things, but they're getting like my new one is, you know, I'm like up to 8.7 warp, which is you get, you get, they get faster. You can get across the, uh, you know, the galaxy a lot quicker and stuff. But there's a lot of different things. Like well, the first one I had was pretty cool because, man, that thing turned on a dime. Man, this big one I got now, it's like, oh, come on, my turn. Yep. <laughs> it's so slow, but man, this thing just, you know, it's got four weapons in the front, four in the back. You know, you can do all phasers, you can do all torpedoes, or whatever you want. You can just you can put in what you want, but man, it's uh it's pretty fun. So, but I think uh, the draws a lot of people are like I've put so much time in it. You know, you kind of I think a lot of people get into it, really get into it, mm -hmm. and they want to deck out stuff and they want to buy different things. And uh, here, I think it's you know a lot of cosmetic stuff or a lot of I want to try to get the best weapons and. Maybe there's better weapons if I pay real money. I don't really know. I stay out of the store. I don't go in and look because I don't want <laughs> For your to own know. good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know what's right. coming. I don't want to put a ton of money into this because it's going to go by the wayside here pretty quick. But it's going to be that game that when I... It's your money is spoken for. Yeah. When, when I don't have or I don't feel like playing Forza or XCOM or Gears or when I get like, okay, I've kind of worn out. I want to do something different. This is going to be the game I come back to. Um, it would, it would, since okay, since you like this game so much, it would be interesting to see if you know when some of these AAA titles come out for the holiday okay. season, if you actually put them aside to go back to this for a while. I could see you doing that. Um. Yeah. I, well, it depends. There's a lot coming out. I would expect, but I would expect that I will be playing this again before the end of the year. Yes. You know. I do believe so. It's it's fun. It's really fun. <laughs> Especially when you team up with your friends, man, and do these deep space battles, man. It's just insane. I, I I got a grin on my face. I can't stop grinning. It's 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 cool. You guys got to check it out. Um, it's just total total fun, man. It, it's like what Star Trek should be. You get space missions. You get away missions. It's 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 the ground stuff is not my favorite. It's um, really wonky, and my that's the term I use. The you just kind of stand there. You you can't take cover. I wish it was like the ground portion. If the ground combat was more like cover based, and you could get behind and shoot, then it'd be a lot of fun. But you kind of just stand there, and you're like pew pew with your little phaser gun, and you have a personal shield, and you try to move to avoid their fire, but you just kind of stand in there going pew pew. So it's really kind of lame. Not the best, but so far there's been a pretty good variety of missions and things you do. I had one the other day that, oh boy, about sent me through the roof was this 
shuttlecraft mission and that that really oh my gosh i had i was so frustrated over that it just was like you couldn't figure out where to go um i, I got a lot of beefs with the game too but it's all stuff like uh the hud's so small or you can't the colors they used maybe it's just you know and i'm getting old and getting blind and i can't tell where i'm supposed to go and i, I you know it's just i think there's too much and you're it's too hard to figure out where you're supposed to go i, I think there's a lot of things that they could do to improve this game but it's so much fun that it's like you don't necessarily mind all the glitches and there's missions that will glitch out and you'll have to reload them and redo them not all the time but it does happen and everybody I, i've talked to that's played has had run into that um but it's it's not enough to like wow this game just blows i'm never touching it it is a lot of fun it really is um, the draws there, and for someone who's a huge Star Trek fan, and money's of no concern, boy, they're gonna they're gonna open their wallet to that in, in a heartbeat, and that's what keeps it going. They only need a. We should look this up or do a story on it. But I remember reading somewhere a long time ago about these free to play models. If, if there's like such a small percentage of people that pay into them, like the majority never pay a dime to these games, but the small percentage that do tend to put so much money into them that it allows the game to maintain and they can make a profit and keep it going. So kudos to those that have been doing this for many years. Cause it's great. It's fun. All right. Yeah. You, you look at a lot of the mobile uh, companies like supercell that make uh, clash Royale clash of clans. I've heard something like they make like two to $3 million a day. Don't you- Wow. Those are free to play games. Yeah. So people are doing it. And I think when you get such a good game that's a lot of fun, you tend to feel like, man, you know what? Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's free. They didn't charge me. I want to give them money. And I think people do tend to open their wallets. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have a problem giving them more money, to be honest. I, I've put a lot of hours into it. It's it's and when it comes to like Star Trek Online and it being free to play, you know, it, to me, I like, I prefer that type of game more than I would Clash of Clans and stuff like that. Because what happens is they're, they're not free. I mean, I know they claim free to play, but they put up a paywall so early that, um, that it's ridiculous. I mean, like their paywalls are so aggravating. It's like literally there's a point in time where you can't play the game. Unless you pay, so games like that is it's like I would rather pay you know four ninety nine for the game and just get the whole game when it comes to mobile side. So yeah, on the mobile side, and this this game's nothing like that, and never when there wasn't either. You right. can completely play through the entire game, get all the achievements, and you don't need to pay money. Right. That's why I think the whole me paying the five dollars for more sh- ship docks that was just a confusion on my part. I'm almost positive that you don't have to buy that. I'm, I'm almost positive. I'm pretty sure I made a mistake. But I don't mind because I found it. And, you know, I don't mind. I've put so much time into this game. To me, I, I want to throw them some more money, and I probably will. Yeah. But they, I'm going to wait till the holiday run goes out, and I'll come right back to this and probably give them some money. Yeah, it's almost like you kind of feel to the point where they deserve something. So yeah. that, that's, yeah. that's nice. And so. I don't feel like they're they're forcing me. It's one of those, yeah, like the, what is that, the uh, Candy Crush, you know. I, I like those, but then pretty quickly you get to a point where it's like, okay, you got to buy new lives or pay money to continue on the level to try to beat it. Or they, they purposely, those are built purposely. Yeah, that's, that's the payoff. Basically, they put a wall up in front yep. of you real quick so they make money. Right. That's not what the Star Trek is. Right. Um, and with, that's why I like it. That's why I pretty happy with this developer this is two games i've played i'm not big into mmos like mmorpgs and i played a ton of neverwinter and had a had a blast yeah so uh, and i gave them money too for that so mm-hmm. treat the gamers right they'll take care of you <laughs> yeah so all right what was it my turn oh, what? <laughs> hey real quick i okay. i looked up those uh the supercell stats and okay. Let me pull the calculator. So in 2015, they made 
with just three games last year. So Clash Royale is new this year. So last year they had Clash of Clans, Heyday, and what was the other one? Boom Beach. So with those three games, they pulled in $2.3 billion. <laughs> those are purely free to play. Actually, how much is that per day? Though? Well, no, those are not pure free to play. Oh, yeah. Well, those are the ones, but Clash of Clans, right, gets to a point where you're building up your defenses, right? So you're building up your little defenses, and, and you are and you have to wait 24 hours for something to, yeah. bu- to build up or something like that. But within <coughs> that 24 hours, two or three people can come and just blow all that stuff up. So it's like, nope, sorry, you can't. Once you get up to where you have to you wait a certain it. amount of time, it's like you, it's almost like you're, you, you cannot move forward unless you pay money. That that's my thing. Eventually, you cannot. It, they say free to play, right? But it's you can free to play until we tell you you can't play anymore, or have to wait three days to play, or you give us money and we'll let you play now. So that to me, that that's that paywall I'm talking about. Like free to play right. to me is you can absolutely pay for play for free, and if you want to buy cosmetic things or or something like that, then you can give us money. Sure. So. And I think the premise of these games is a little bit different. You know, the console games that we're really used to, I mean, console and PC games, they're really meant to be played right? as a long-term experience. A lot of these mobile games, they're meant to be played like, just like, like Clash Royale. I'll play a battle. It takes like three minutes. And then I put it down for a couple hours. Maybe I'll play another round or two and that's about it it's not really meant to be engaged right. for a very long time so when and, and i know it's frustrating but when you're trying to progress in the game you can't really think of it as being like i'm sitting here and i'm playing this game and i'm going to complete it in a couple of weeks no it's really a more long-term thing mm-hmm. but it does suck to wait. Yeah. So in, in a, it, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> what I'm about to say is is not like, I know you play these games, Rob, so I'm not saying this and I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that, but those games, mm-hmm. like on the mobile mm-hmm. side, to me are targeting a generation above us. They're, they're targeting like my mom and my dad and, you know, my aunt and uncle. Like they're targeting that level, uh, you know, for those people who maybe sitting at home and, and stuff like, cause like for you and I, it's just like, Oh, let me set up my, let me play a battle while I'm going to work. And then, Oh, look, I have to wait six hours before I can do something. Okay, cool. By the time I'm done with work and on my way home, I'll get to do another battle. Right. Yeah, If you remember, if you remember, or if you, <laughs> yeah, if you're completely not busy chasing your kids around and stuff like that. But if you're, you know, you know, somebody, it's my relative who's retired and they're sitting at home. They're like, Oh, I got to wait six hours. I, you know, I guess I can watch Oprah or, or Ellen or, you know, watch a TV show and, and do this or oh, for two ninety nine I can play right now. So it's like two ninety nine, two ninety nine, two ninety nine, two ninety nine. You know what I mean? So it's like, to me, they're kind of like tricky a little bit, <laughs> but it's like the one arm bandit. Right. So, I mean, yeah. those, that $2.3 billion is, you know, almost like a scam. <laughs> No, and I don't have anything mm-hmm. against those. I don't have anything against those. I've played those games as well. But the time I stopped playing them is when they pay gated me within 25 minutes of playing the game. And it's just like, oh, okay, so you're free to play for 25 minutes. So, but, uh, yeah. All right. Can we? Can we... And so oh, the so total good. was actually uh, 6.3 million a day. Jeez. Dude, we need to make a game. <laughs> Uh, we paywall yes. it after we'll give him 30 minutes before we paywall it. <laughs> I'm so, I'm sorry, Brun. Grandma oh, can't play pay for her meds because she's been been playing Clash of Clans. <laughs> so, this uh, this Clash this Xbox Clash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this Clash All life. Right. All right. Um yeah. well, what I've been playing <laughs> 
this last week or so is really nothing. So uh, we we can we can push forward. Um, I I have not, not had I have not had time to play many games. I am looking forward to Forza Horizon Three, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so moving forward, uh, I want to if you'd like to support us to become a patron uh, Patreon, you can go to this xboxlife.com slash Patreon, and it'll forward you the, to our page. Uh, that is more of a monthly subscription. Um, or if you'd just like to donate a tip, toss us a couple thousand dollars, um, you can go to this xboxlife.com slash donate. So, and uh, we do really appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. It's you guys are a fantastic community. Uh, and I think we are on topics. So round table for this week, we have two, I think two really good round table. Um, and I, just a couple little news points here. First thing we're all getting gears for, right? I know Mark. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. Uh-huh. So Rob, so maybe, uh, it's gone gold. So gone gold. Rob, we need to get kicked off the show if you don't get yeah. gears. Just so you know, I'm telling you. So Gears 4 is well, gone one gold. one of you guys isn't getting it, so you're off with me. <laughs> I'll be playing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's 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 uh, gone gold. We knew it was coming up soon, but it's just official. Um, and then uh, the next thing we have here is more PS more PS4 Pro slash Scorpio stuff. So who who threw this one in here? Who wants to? Chat oh, that, about that. That's me. Okay, go for it. So I just wanted to. I thought this was kind of interesting. Oh boy. Uh, uh oh, I stopped it. I think. Uh, nope. I yeah, didn't. Don't stop go it. to the. Don't go it. Don't oh. go to the site. Okay. Yeah, I got stopped. <laughs> it does that a couple times. These these guys, man, they're trying to. Man. Oh, anyway. gotta get that ad revenue. Oh. That one runs, and then they pop another one up, and you gotta pause that one or kill that one. And the, the original one you pause starts running again. And come on, guys! All right, so I just thought this was interesting. So after all the the stuff came out uh, about the PS4 Pro, um, there was uh, Microsoft's Albert Pinello uh, came out and made some comments. He claims that the PS4 Pro's 4.2 teraflops of power, <coughs> 4.2. What a joke! Uh, uh, isn't enough to render true 4K natively. In an interview with Eurogamer, he said, I think there are a lot of caveats they're giving customers right now around 4K. They're talking about checkerboard rendering and upscaling and things like that. There are just a lot of asterisks in their marketing around 4K, which is interesting because when we thought about what spec we wanted for Scorpio, we were very clear we wanted developers to take their Xbox One engines and render them in native true 4K. That was why we picked the number. That's why we have the memory bandwidth we have. That's why we have the teraflops we have, because it's what we heard from game developer developers was required to achieve native 4K. Um, uh, later in the interview, Eurogamer posted the question whether Pinello was hinting that Sony's PS4 Pro marketing was misleading. He said, uh, I wouldn't actually say that it say that if you go look at their marketing and look at what Cerny said. They talk about checkerboard rendering. They've been very open about it. I'm not accusing them of anything. They've been very open about the compromises around 4K. Um, And they go on and on about this. But I think what's interesting is I kind of like, this is what we were talking about last week. Um, uh, Christoph wrote in or sent us the voicemail about this. We had some questions in our Facebook group about it. Christoph kind of answered for us because obviously this is beyond our realm of expertise. But I do think that Sony isn't being straight and forthcoming because at, at with developers or with the you know gaming experts, if you will, they're gonna they're maybe talking about checkerboarding and all this. For Joe Blow consumer, they're just looking at 4K is on the box. They don't care how you get it. They're just gonna believe that. What you're saying is what they're going to get. Right. So, you know, again, um, Sony might be okay because Joe Blow is not going to, they're not going to know the difference. Well, but, you know, who counts teraflops? You know, what's true 4K? But this, you know, Sony says I'm still getting 4K. Unless you have two systems side by side in the proper settings with the proper TVs and the proper games and all that whatnot. 
you're you're not going to know. You're going to believe what has been sold to you by the PR teams. And so I think it's kind of interesting. And, and when we we had that interview with Christoph, who talked about, uh, he talked about like HDR and right. 4K and what's required and what's needed. You know, and it was like, this is like hardware. And, and then Sony comes out and says, oh yeah, that PS4 you bought three years ago. Yeah, we're going to upgrade that through software to 4K. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, even I'm like, how do you do that? HDR. I don't think you yeah. can, right? And, uh, oh, or HDR. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So it's just like, it sounds to me, and now everything's going to be, you know, they're going to do all this 4K, but they're not going to have to change the hardware. And it's like, okay, something's not sitting right. Right. It doesn't make sense. Um, and, and no, and I'm talking about the 4K, because that's what he said. Sony, the question was, are they being honest about their 4K? And well, they're not. They're, no, I they're, mean, they're, right. And I and I don't believe they are. They might be. You know, when you start talking about upscaling or trying to to use software to make something do something that's not natively it can't do, then I don't really feel your console can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Is that I don't know if that's really fair. You know, I'm, I'm sure I know that, you know, the 360 probably did upscaling for different things. And, you know, so I don't think for the general consumer, it's really going to matter. Um, and that's probably why they're doing it. They're going to they can as long as they can say 4K and HDR, it doesn't matter to Sony uh, if it's true 4K or true HDR, because the general consumer isn't going to know the difference. Yeah. They didn't know the difference between the PS4 and the Xbox One. All they saw was a $100 price difference. So they went with the cheaper box. I mean, um, Sony knows that, okay, Microsoft's going big. They're going to have a six teraflop thing. They're going to have, you know, our bot, we're expecting this Xbox One Scorpio to be expensive. Sony's going to response is, well, we can kind of, Say you're getting this. It won't be the same. It's not going to be as good, but we don't have to say that. We're just going to say yeah, they won't. Gonna get this, and the people are going to buy into it. And and they can get it at a cheaper price. They're going to say, oh, well, my PlayStation 4 Pro or Pro 4 Super Duper, whatever they're going to release next year to compete with Scorpio, they're going to be able to say it's cheaper, and I get the same thing. But in reality, I don't think – it sounds like what I'm seeing, they're not going to get the same thing. Right. That the Scorpio is gonna be the big bad boy on the block, right. so I think Microsoft's gonna have to really take a hit price wise. I still think Sony's gonna undersell them uh, price wise, undercut them on price. Yeah, I mean, I I've read in that article people talking about like the the Scorpio being like seven hundred to a thousand dollars. No, no, it will not be. <laughs> it's just like there's no, it, you can't go over four ninety nine. I, I I you can't go over four ninety nine. Uh, in my mind, but uh, yeah, they're going to uh, have to take a bath on the hardware. Yeah, which I think would be huge. I mean, yeah, I know that'd be huge. But today's PC gaming, it takes like dual Titan X's, not the new Titan X's, but the old Titan X's, or like dual 1080s to get like true 4K. Y- you know, in PC gaming. Right. So I can tell you that no Xbox One that's currently out today. And no PS4 that's currently out today or being released in the next month or so, or like next month, will be even remotely close to true 4K. And Scorpio has to prove it before they can say it. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, what 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 do the Titan X's have? They have like 12 gigs of RAM in them or something like that, or or eight. Like the 1080s have eight, and and whatever they're, <laughs> the chip they're putting in the Scorpio is going to have like 12. So. I mean, it could possibly do it. I'm not saying that it's not, or I'm not calling Microsoft out or anything like that. But it's it's just like you know, even some of the people that are like, you know, you know, Scorpio says they're going to be true 4K, but are they really going to be true 4K? And and we have to wait and see on that. But there is yeah, nothing not- out today. Nope, not even close. I mean, not the Xbox One or One S, not the not the PlayStation Four at all. Um, but and and you know you gotta you kind of said it at first and and Microsoft plays with words as well. I'm not I'm not saying it's just Sony, but Sony constantly oversells and underdelivers. 
constantly. And they say things and they manipulate people and things like that. And it's just like it, and people are starting to come around, which is what I really like. I mean, let's go back to E3s, right? Where they dropped those three big bombs on everybody. And, you know, you had the people like almost passing out and like all in tears and crying. You know, they had Final Fantasy VII Remake. They had Shin Shimu 3. Uh, when they were begging people for money, you know, because they want to make that game. And they had Last Guardian. It was like those three. And they were just like, ah, you know, this is great. And that's 2015. And, you know, everybody, when when uh, Final Fantasy Remake, when it launched, la- um, yeah, okay, sometime when it's going to launch. And, you know, and when Shinmu 3 came out and it was a uh, uh, long, oh, wait, that's right. Oh, and when Last Guardian was launched, oh, wait, it hasn't been yet either. It's just like they play everybody. They played them, and they did the same thing this E3. You know, we we constantly target them with saying, like, oh, they kept showing all these games, but they said no dates because there are no dates, and you're just being suckered into it. Um, that's just what they do. That's what that's just what they do. But they're, hey, they've got over $40 million. Um, But, yeah. <laughs> we get, we're, we're beginning to get in some heated discussions at work because I'm, get, I'm getting kind of, you know tired of the Sony horse crap. It's just like, and then the media just gobbles it all up and just loves it. <laughs> yeah. So, Except for more recently when they started been bashing it, but then you have groups like Colin and Greg, which we talked about a couple shows ago, Mark, saying they were absolutely like, they hated the new PlayStation, you know, and stuff like yeah. that. But then you turn around and the PlayStation podcast on IGN made it like it's no big deal. It's yeah. because, well, you're, of course you're going to make it a no big deal because you have to make it no big deal or those checks won't continue to come in. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I just, I listened to that. I was kind of curious. I'm like, I can't wait to hear what they're saying. I'm just like, why are they playing us off like nothing's wrong? <laughs> but, yeah. oh well. Um, all right. Because they don't want to bust out their wallet and find it's empty, that's why. Yeah. So. All right. So main main discussions here. So you sent a couple links, Mark. The first one I read, and <laughs> it, it, it's it's crazy because it hits close to home to me, right? So okay. do you want to go over it first, or do you want me to just kind of hit? Yeah. What I'd like to do is I'd actually like to read just. Portion of the first section. I don't yep. want to go into the whole thing. Good. That's I, what I, I just think to the too. very beginning is what I want to talk about. Yep. Um, so this article is from the Washington Post. It was written by Anna Swanson. So I want to give credit to them. And the title is Why Amazing Video Games Could Be Causing a Big Problem for America. So she reads that Danny is a 22 year old who lives with his parents in Maryland, has found little satisfaction in a series of part-time, low-wage jobs he's held since graduating from high school. But the video games he plays, he plays, including FIFA 16 and Rocket League and Pokemon Go, are a different story. Quote, when I play a game, I know if I have a few hours, I will be rewarded, he said. With a job, it's always been up in the air with the amount of work I put in and the rewards. (laughs) Danny represents a group of video game-loving Americans who, according to new research, may help explain one of the most alarming aspects of the nation's economic recovery. Even as the unemployment rate has fallen to low levels, an unusually large percentage of able-bodied men, particularly the young and less educated, are either not working or not working full-time. Most of the blame for the struggle of male, less educated workers has been attributed to lingering weakness in the economy particularly in male-dominated industries such as manufacturing. Yet in the new research, economists from Princeton, University of Rochester, and the University of Chicago say that an additional reason many of these young men who don't have college degrees are rejecting work is that they have a better alternative, living at home and enjoying video games. The decision may not even be completely con- conscious, but surveys suggest that young men are happier for it. Um. I think that's probably enough that I need to read into it. So I, I, I laughed when the guy said I get rewarded in a few hours with a job. You never know. I, I, I disagree with that. 
I get rewarded every two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. You, you have to start. You have to start at the very beginning on what uh, what it says. It says, you know, a twenty two year old who lives with his parents. You know, so his every two week thing doesn't really matter because he's not feeling the hurt when he's not getting that paycheck. So, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. So so so, <laughs> the reason why I say it hits close to home is I have a twenty year old. Um. I love him to death. You know, he is my, he's my, he's my boy. I love him. Um, wouldn't trade anything for the world, but I will say that he loves video games. He does. And he would rather be playing video games than he would be working at a job. Um, which I think has cost him dearly in his life of decisions of, I'd rather play video games than doing my homework. I'd rather be playing video games and going to school, and I'd rather be playing video games and getting up and going to work, right? So this story is absolutely like hit. Like I said, it hits close to home because it's it's true. It is. Now there's a lot of glaring things in front of this too. It is also the generation of these men that, or men or women, because it just I know it points out guys here. But it, it's men and women in this generation of I want everything to be handed to me and I'm not willing to work to get anything done. So not only that, but then also these video games. And, and that's because like, like this thing's targeting video games saying, you know, oh, this is a problem in America when really it's just more than that. It, it's well, this is true. Think, no, I don't think they're targeting video games. I think. I, because, um, like, one of the things here, um, I think it's more on the economy because it, it does go about unemployment. It talks about the economy, but yeah. you know, they she, she goes on here saying, while young men might temporarily enjoy a life of leisure, the implications could be troubling for them as well as the economy. The young men aren't gaining job experience that will better equip them to work in their 30s and 40s. That in turn could lead to a lifetime of decreased wages, limited opportunities, and challenges such as depression and drug use. Right. Um, you know. And I mean, you know, I got younger kids and I keep talking to them about, you know, I'm not going to pay your way. They just, they just think everything should be given to them. And what kills me is I don't raise my children that way. I don't yeah. raise them to just think that everything's just granted to them. Right. But this yeah. is what they think. It's like, this is what this generation has. So exactly. they're, you know, oh, my friends have an iPhone seven. You're freaking nine. Right. <laughs> Why am I gonna? I'm not buying you a phone. Yeah. Period. Well, I mean, it's, and I've told them when you get it, when you are old enough to work and get a job and pay for your own phone bill, then you can get any cell phone you want. I don't right. care. I'm not paying for it, and yeah. you don't need it. You don't need TVs and laptop computers and stuff in your room. You don't need it. What you need is to do your homework and go to school. That and is all you and need. Clothes. <laughs> Food, yeah. clothes, and a house. And I will provide you those. I will provide you everything you need. Yeah. Those you, know? you will give to them. And short, like the things and, you want, go out and work for it. Yeah. Period. <laughs> and, and 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 that's the thing. It's like you know, I know it, you're right. It does try. It does mention like unemployment. It's like all unemployment's at an all time low. Like people that may not be in the U.S. that are listening to this, like our unemployment only counts the people that are actively looking for a job. Right. So we have, a, you know, say it's six percent. I don't even know what it is. Six percent. That's people actively looking. So Mister, you know, this twenty-two-year-old here that's at home playing video games and lives with his parents. If he's not actively looking for a job, he's not included in that low, you know, unemployment right. rate. And when yeah. the unemployment and the thing is, is the unemployment numbers are made up by, you know, are calculated by our government and they can change them and change the calculation in any way they please to make them seem whatever they want the public to know. Right. About. So right. <laughs> it's just like it's a it's a mess. <laughs> Scam. So but thank goodness so, we have an election because somebody's going to fix all this. Um, but uh, <laughs> so. Real quick about this about this article. I mean, I I saw that this article came out. I didn't really read the whole thing. I just kind of glanced at it, mm -hmm. and I'm glad we kind of covered this right now because this whole article is BS. 
I mean, this is clickbaity. We just look at this headline. Why amazing video games could be causing a big problem for America. That is clickbaity. What is who who says amazing video games? Is that a category as opposed to like crappy video games? I mean, what where's where did they come up with this? But the thing is, this problem that they're talking about, it's a timeless problem. There were people, let's maybe call them deadbeats, that don't want a job. They sit at home. They live with their parents. They don't have an income. This is nothing new. It happened when I grew up. It happened in the 50s. This was always there. It's just the circumstances are different. Right now, a kid, let's say in his early 20s, and it is normal sometimes for kids in their early 20s to you know, just having finished college and, you know, trying to find their way, you know, it it is normal for them to sit at home and okay, playing the video games probably isn't the best thing, but before, what would they do? They'd go out every night hitting the bars or who knows what, or just, uh, I don't know, doing whatever people did back then. Was it, was that one stupid game with like that ring and the stick? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Where you push that oh, yeah. like, hula hoop looking thing with the stick? Yeah. That's what they did back in the day. Now they play video games because <laughs> the video games are more interesting. But this whole article is BS. This is nothing new. It basically just calls out something that's been in society, not just America, but all sorts of different societies of where people just aren't grown up. They're not being responsible. And they just picked on video games. Yeah. Oh, it, it, oh yeah. The, yeah. The, and that's that's the thing. Like, it's just the generation. And, and, and then you have people, like, pandering to this generation. Like, they're going to help them or do something for them. You know, just go go vote for me and I'll, I'll do this. Or we're going to make America great again. I'll do this. I'll do this. It's just pandering. They pander to anybody they have to, to do to get them... Get a college, vote. but yeah, you know, yes, we have to do something about our education system. I try to put my twenty-year-old through college, but I make too much money to get any grants for him for college. But I don't make enough money to support my family and him in college because it's so expensive. But yet, his friend gets to go for free. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how it works. So it's just, it's just insane. So then he's stuck on his own to do college and wasn't very motivated because he just went and played games all the time. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it is a clickbaity article though. I, I, I found it to be rather interesting. And, um, you know, I think about Brun, you and I both know somebody who does play video games for a job, you know, and Good for uh, him. You know, mm-hmm. darkness four two nine, uh, does streams Twitch every day. This is what he does for a living. And, you know, I think it's cool, but I guess my thought on that is I don't think I could do something like that. I would get bored. I couldn't be committed to coming on and playing games for eight chore. hours a day every day because, yeah, after a while, I mean, he it's amazing it he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, and he's got a lot of people that follow him. I jump in every once in a while, and he's always entertaining. And I think he's just got the personality that can do something like that. But... For myself, I'm like, okay, I'm married, I got a family. I'm not a risk taker enough to depend on that because you're depending on people always showing up on Twitch. You're just you're 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 relying on the general public and Twitch never to change the rules and then for them to actually pay you to do this. Uh, what if you get bored with it? So, you know, I do think about him. He's younger, he does he is married. Well, yeah, um, he's, he's he's married. He's been through call. You know, he's got a college yeah. education. He was working when he started this, and then he was getting big. And he, him, and his, you know, I imagine him and his wife discussed it, something he wanted to try to do, and he's done it. And he's been doing it for two years, and you know, which is great. But I think this article here isn't like, oh, I want to be a streamer. You know, that's no, 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 no. Know, that's and that's not what I'm getting to. Right, right. What I'm yeah. trying. To, what I'm getting to is that what. What happens if he gets bored 
what happens if for some reason the viewership drops or what happens if Twitch all of a sudden says they're bought out by someone else and they're like, well, we're just dropping Twitch or we're no longer going to pay for this or we're not paying, you know, we're changing the way we do our revenue and all this yes, type of like stuff. I mean, something happened with Google recently with YouTube. I don't know the yeah, exact yeah, details oh, yeah. of it, but oh. yeah. yeah. So, you know, that, and, and, but if he decides not to do it, I mean, and there's always the risk. I mean, okay, I got a quote traditional job. I work for the man. I get paid every two weeks. You know, doesn't mean I won't get a call tomorrow and saying you're done. Mm-hmm. You know, that can that type of thing can always happen. But let's say let's say he says, you know what, I it didn't break me into where I wanted to in the video game industry, and I don't really want to do this when I'm 50 years old. What's he going to do when he wants to go to the marketplace? They're going to be like, oh, well, what's your work history? Well, I played video games the last two, three years, four years, ten years. I would imagine if I was sitting there trying to hire someone, that I'd be like, <laughs> okay, have a nice day. I mean, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I can't see myself hiring somebody who sat around playing video games for the last several years. Even though, and, I, and I'm not I'm not picking on Tim, because Tim's different. He he is done it as a career. He's turned it into something. He's being successful with it. He's not just sitting at home in mommy and daddy's basement. So right. yeah. there, there's a difference, but I, I'm trying to, you know, so back to the article, someone who's sitting in mommy's daddy's basement and, and that's all they're doing. And they're not, they're not learning a career or, you know, that's going to be really hard for them to get in the job market when they do. And I think the article is correct that it's going to affect them later on in life. Because if you're going to start your career 10 years later, you know how maybe this guy that's 22, he might be playing games till he's 30, and then he's like, okay, I got to start getting a work job. Guess what? He's going entry level at age 30. Yeah, no kidding. No retirement. You know, yeah, your your retirement takes a hit. Your your good luck supporting a family. Mm-hmm. You know, and even if you're doing something like a Twitch streamer, you know, how long is that sustainable? And then what happens when you do need to go into, I hate to say real job market because he is working. That is work. I don't know how you have to go into another. It's that. another career path. You're, yeah, you're, gonna, you're changing. Yeah, you're changing like, careers. You're changing careers. That'd be a better example. Yeah, you know? and um, it's just like I think that would be really hard to get back into a mindset. First of all, a mindset. I work from home now. Um, I've been doing this for six years, working from home. That was really hard for me to transition from an office job to work at home. And now that I'm there, I love it. I was like, I can never picture myself going back to the office. And and if something changed and forced me back in, I would have a hard time with that because of just because of the the freedoms, the the lack of I don't have to commute four hours a day like I used to in Chicago. And, you know, it, it's just my life. Uh, what is um, my, my happiness? My, you know, yeah, just it, it's so much quality of life. My quality of life is so much more improved um, over what it used to be that I would really, and I know it would just plummet if I had to go back into an office. Um, but, you know, even for me, I'm still in the, quote, you know, career field. A lot of people are starting to work from home, especially in IT. Yeah. You know, so it's just, we can do it. And, you know, so I just, I man, I just, I don't know. I think it's an interesting article. Yeah. I and found it, it very interesting, and I worry for the youth who are getting so sucked into video games. I see my own kids wanting to do it um, because, of course, I'm a bad influence. You know, Dad's always playing, and I'm sitting there going, you can't play more than one hour. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm on it all the time. Yeah, like <laughs> one hour at a time. Yeah. This article yeah. here, you know, I think is targeting, like, people straight out of high school and stuff like that. You know, you know, I know we're using – Tim as an example, and we're not picking on Tim or actually saying oh, Tim no, himself. No, no, I have a lot of respect for oh, Tim. Yeah. I, I hope if he hears this, and I know a lot of people out there know Tim. I like Tim. I'm so glad he's been able to be successful with it. Um, and I know he he's so he's, he doesn't fit this article. No, because you know, he's was, like I said, he's went to college. All. He's he's been in a career. He switched careers of doing this. Like to me, like him going, right. if he had to switch back into another career. Yes, he would still be wherever his experience left him, you know, right. but I mean, he could be a great marketer or, you know, he could go into anything that spawns out of what he does now because of, you know, just what he but does. There's a lot of, I use him cause he's the one I know, yeah, but there's a true. tremendous amount of people that yeah. do what he's doing, stre- Twitch streamers for a living, you know, 
is that sustainable? I mean, it might be, it is new. It's something new because even like with me, I'm like work from home. I, that was so foreign, man. Right. I'm like, just to me, I felt like that's, that's not a real job. Yeah. I struggled when I took this job because I felt like it wasn't a real job. And I, and, and now it is. And I, I, I can't believe how many people I know uh, that are in their careers and they work from home. I know so many people that do it. It's like, wow, yeah. it's becoming commonplace. So Twitch streaming probably is going to become commonplace, right? But yeah. it's still new enough that we're like, is it? We don't know if it's going to be sustainable, right? Um, so I think that's the big question. Yeah, but. and I and like I'm in IT as well. I get one day a week. Like I don't get to do it every day, but I get one day a week, which is nice. It's really awesome. But you know, and and for somebody like this article here, that's you know, he's 22. Like I said, my my son's 20. Like it was. You're going to school. You're in the military. You know, or maybe law going into law enforcement or something like that. Those were criterias where you can stay at home. You know, you can stay in my household. Right. I will I will do that. Like any any young man or woman who's going into the military, like I know the military will take care of you and do this and that, but you are all like you were here in my home and stuff like that. But once it became, oh, you're not in school, you're just going to try to sit around here and play video games all day like this guy does here with his parents, it was, I was, you have two weeks. Yeah. That was it. That was mine. And, and it's, like, very hard as a parent to sit there and tell your kids, like, you got two weeks to get out. You know, if, if you want to go and, you know, go to your dad's house and see if he will let you stay and do this and that or, you know, and and... and I think he's better off now that because of that, you know, he, he has his own place now. He has a job now. He, I mean, he's working and stuff like that. He realizes that he doesn't get to play games all day long and that's not a big deal to him. You know, like he gets to play games, but it's not like this guy here. I think for this article, his parents just need to say, you got two <laughs> weeks just like I did and, and then see what he does and get him on their feet. Cause sometimes you got to push the bird out of the nest. You know, the baby bird has got to be pushed out of the nest, to learn how to fly some. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But maybe that's just my way I was raised and a little bit old school, but yeah. So, so but. Ron, what do you think about paying an extra $40 to push that bird out of the nest four days early so you can play with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. So, so Rob, Rob, if you don't, <laughs> good transition. Um, Thank well, you. Well, Rob, well Rob. Okay, so everybody, if you don't, if you were here when Rob was talking about what he's been playing, he had Forza Horizon Three on his list, and Mark was like, "Oh, we're gonna throw down," because either that's why I said demo, and he said, "Yeah, the demo." Either he was playing the demo, or he paid extra money just to play the game. Four days earlier, yeah, and, not just and, extra money, one hundred dollars. Well, well, I'm saying on top of the if you're yes. buying the game for sixty bucks, so it's sixty, eighty, one hundred. Now, before everybody starts yelling at me on in our in our Twitch chat here, before you start yelling at me, yes, you get like for the uh, for the eighty dollars, you get like the VIP package, and you get like one car pack uh but if you get the hundred dollar version you get like three more car packs uh, uh and the vip thing and you get to pay it play it four days earlier so this topic here is what are we thinking about this four days early for you know a hundred bucks type of scenario because i know i know i'm picking on forza horizon 3 right now they're not the only ones doing it so nope. you had they're not the first well, they're not the first. Was it Day Deus Ex? Yeah, Deus Ex did it. I think uh, NBA 2K15. Right. 16. One of them did it, but there was a difference. Okay. A difference with the NBA game. The NBA game was if anybody that pre-ordered it got it early. Okay. This is, and I don't know what Deus Ex was. Forza Horizon 3 was if you spend $100, if you bought the ultimate version, you got the game four days early. Um, I purchased the deluxe version, which was 80 bucks, 
um, because I wanted the VIP pass. Um, and really, I mean, that's pretty much, I think, I'm trying to look what the different versions were. Um, cause I'm, I want to get this correct. But um, the, the the difference between the $80 and the $100, uh, I didn't know about the four days. But it wouldn't, I didn't really care anyways. But I'm not going to pay 20 bucks to play a game four days early. But And I, I know everybody that's been playing it, that's not what they bought it for. They, they didn't, so the guy, the people I know, a lot of people have been playing it. So a lot of people, I can't believe how many people I see on my list oh, that totally. been playing this and bought the ultimate version. I was like, wow. Um, uh, but they bought it because they're diehard Forza fans and they wanted all the cars. And, and for me, I was like, well, the $80 is fine for me because I don't want to pay the 100 because I don't care about all the car packs. That was the only difference. That's all I was missing between the 80 and the $100 version was. I don't get to play four days early, and I don't get all the extra car packs that they're going to give out. I'd have to buy them if I want them. I've never wanted car packs. I've never bought car packs for any Forza game. So $80 was cool for me. Not being able to play the game four days early when everybody else did, I think's kind of crappy. Um, simply for the fact that I think it should be anybody that pre-ordered. I think that'd be a cool bonus. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I don't mind. I, that. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's kind of, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna give us your money up front, then we're gonna let you play the game a little early. Um, I, I I don't have a problem with that. I don't think it's necessary. But when you say, well, if you give us a hundred dollars, we're gonna get you have it a few days early when the game is sitting on my box ready to go. Yep. It's not like I'm waiting for them to finish it. All I need is that last little bit that <laughs> says, boom, you've paid. You know, the only reason I can't play it is they haven't charged me for it yet. They will tonight or tomorrow, you know, and then they'll, when the clock ticks midnight, boom, I can play it. Um, that, that to me, that's just kind of lousy, but I know a lot of people are really ticked off over this and I've seen a lot of people complaining about forts and this is the first time I've really seen anyone complain about it. So I wonder maybe because Deus Ex wasn't, Maybe it's not as big of a franchise. I, I find that hard to believe. I mean, that's been around for a long time, but they people seem to be generally upset over this right now. Yeah, the the Deus Ex one was weird because there was theirs was like, oh, if we get a hundred thousand people to pre order, we'll let everybody who pre orders play early. Oh, you know, yeah. two days early, four days early, and then they just turned it and said, if you pre order, I think theirs was if you just pre ordered it was four days early. He got it on Friday. And if you didn't pre-order it, then you got it on Tuesday. And you know that there, I don't mind that 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 doesn't that doesn't bother me because you're right, the game's the game's finished. Um, and Forza is probably not that big of a deal because I know it, it, unless you're going to go play multiplayer, and all of a sudden that people's had a four day early, you know, four days early, they're riding around in five thousand, you know, five hundred thousand dollar cars that are super fast, and here you are in your Pinto. Um, you know, that kind of, that kind of, you know, and, and actually I heard something on this on another show and I can't remember what it was. They were talking about, it's like, not do we only, we, we already segregate our communities as it is with these season passes and, and our DLCs. Like, you, you know, you split your community when you do that now. Now we're splitting our online communities because these groups are playing it four days earlier than these guys because Gears is doing it and... Uh, is Battlefield doing it? Battlefield's doing it? I thought Battlefield was. And I think Titanfall was going to do it, but they're not doing it because it would have been a part of the EA Access thing. And I think Battlefield's is due to the EA Access. So, so, but, but, you know, for EA Access, just that's a whole separate, that's a whole separate thing. That's not like, oh, give a, give Battlefield, you know, Battlefield 1 20 more bucks to play early. But think about all those multiplayer games. Four days is a long time to get the best weapons, to learn the maps, to yeah. get up your rank, to do all this, and all of a sudden now you're logging in and you, you're going up against a level 50, and you're a level 1. You're like, how'd this happen? Oh, yeah. well, they paid 20 bucks to get it early. <laughs> yeah, I, like so for a game like Forza, I don't think that's really a big deal. Um, I know someone in our group right. was trying to say, well, yeah, but if you're going to go and race against your buddies on day one, and they've already been playing it for a week, they've got better cars, and the uh, thing with Forza is you can say, yeah, but you're limited to these cars, and a lot of times you can still rent cars or do things. You know, you can, you still, 
have the ability to say, well, you may have the fastest car in the game, but guess what? We're going to run C-Class. You know, so it doesn't right. really matter in a game like Forza. Um, it's just of uh, I'm seeing all these people play, and I was like, oh, I so want to play it, you know. Um, Christoph, I actually spoke with Christoph and said, hey, dude, I know because he's a huge Forza nut, man. Right. He loves it and plays the snot out of him. And he's always been uh, very much involved with our Forza community. So I said, I know you're going to get, you're going to hit, be able to hit club level. I said, if you want, you can go ahead and create the TXL um, group. And and he already has. He's already right. gotten high enough level. Uh, he's created it for us, and people can join it today. Um, and uh, so that's out there. But he's one that I already forgot where I was going with this. But um, yeah, completely. I have no idea what I was going to say. <laughs> Talking about wow. like the, the it not being that big of a deal compared to oh, the other so, games. Yeah, I mean, it, it. you know, if him and I get in a game, it, it doesn't really make a difference. But a multiplayer, like you said, Call of Duty, Gears of War, something like that, you mm -hmm. jump in and day one, you're you're hitting people that are way overpowered and got all these weapons. Yeah, it, it, it segment you're segmenting the community right off the bat, even before the game is released. Um, I think that's really bad precedence to set, um, and I would have a big problem with that in a in a multiplayer shooter type of game. Yeah. Um, but then again, I guess we are seeing that. I never really thought about that with EA Access. Right. Um, like Battlefront, you got that a week early, right? I think so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there a lot of the you know anything in EA Access is uh, typically a week early, um, and I never really thought about it. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's EA Access. That was just a perk of all of the other stuff that you get. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm spending 30, was it $34 for an entire year, and I get an entire vault and every game that EA does, except for Titanfall. Um, you well, know, I get it a week a early. Of, this was a perk for Ultimate. And, you know, but I'd rather see them say anybody that pre ordered, you get to play the game. Early. Yeah, and I, I agree. Think, I think that if companies did that, they're going to get a lot more pre-orders. I mean, they they want your money as fast as they can get it, you know. And right. I think if they're saying anybody pre-orders, we're gonna and I could care less about the skins and the, you know, usually their pre-order bonuses are lame. Give me the game a few days early, yeah. you know. Let me play it sooner. I would have loved to have had it Friday night because now I've got XCOM two and Forza three, Horizon three, both coming out this Tuesday. Well, which one am I going to play first? Yeah. You know, I want to play both of them. And it's like, oh, I, I like to just dive into a game and play that exclusively for, you know, like a week or two. Right. Now it's like, well, I got to try to divide it up between the two before the next big game comes out a week later. You know? It's, yeah. Oh. Oof, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so we were talking and Rob wasn't on at the time. So let me, let me throw this hypothetical at him. Like we have these launch days now. Um, basically for the mom and pop or the brick and mortar stores to or Amazon to ship out the physical discs, right? That's that's essentially what a release date was for. That's why we have a hard date. And like I said, like gears went gold this week. When we're in a world where we're digital only, Rob. You know, I know we buy digital only now. When we're in a world that's digital only and Gears of War 4 goes gold, let's say, last Friday, when do you think Gears of War 4 should hit hit your Xbox, or when should it go for sale? Do you think it should wait three, four more weeks to, uh, to for you to be able to download it and play it? Or do you think it should just be something that should go now? Well... There's a lot of marketing stuff tied into all this. So um, the business view is it should be set on a specific date, but the gamer is always going to say, release it as soon as possible. Right. And, and okay, so yeah, you thought of marketing. I even mentioned like, oh, you got to make sure all the servers are set up for online games and stuff like that. But, but it, it's just um, in the future, what about if, Gears of War 4 was coming out in February and it goes lot it goes gold in November. And they say, "Hey Rob, for $250 you can have it next week or you can wait until February and buy it for 60 bucks." What about that? What would you think about that? 
Wait, what was that again? Saying saying you instead of it? waiting for two more months and buying it for sixty dollars, if you pay us two hundred and fifty dollars, we'll give it to you now. Oh. There's people would pay. Pe- people, there's somebody out there. People would pay. But, so so what we're seeing now is you're paying you know, twenty bucks for four days now. So you, what would two months cost? You're not paying twenty dollars for four days. Uh, you're not you're paying five dollars a day. You're you're not <laughs> paying for the early <laughs> access. Well, I know, that, keep... and that's that's the thing is that like yes, it's the perk of getting the extra three car packs. You're paying twenty bucks you, for the you, extra three car packs. Yeah, you got the ultimate version. They're they're giving they're throwing a bone to those that bought the ultimate version. Right. But but you know, and this question is here is what do I think about this? Like you know, and agree, I agree with you. Okay, you pre order the game. We're gonna give it to you four days early. But. Now, when you start including money and including that on a perk, which is another price tier, no, I don't. No, I don't like that because Ian and I was telling you, I was like, I'm trying to think of crazy things that what what dumb company would ever think about doing this? And I made the comment of like, well, Activision will do it, and so will EA. <laughs> but you know, all of a sudden, you know, we see these people's like, oh, if we throw three car packs and say they get it for four days early, we'll we'll get twenty bucks. You know, and then next time it's thirty bucks, and next time it's forty bucks, and then all of a sudden they're thinking, "Well, let's not do our game on disc. Let's just do it digital only." And if they want it a month ahead of time, we'll charge them a hundred and fifty bucks for the game. And then once people, like Rob said, well, people will pay for it. We all know what happens when people start paying for it. Then everybody just follows suit because they see that we can get money for it. It's like it's a snowball effect, right? So things like this kind of worry me of like what what is the snowball effect on something like this, you know? And and like I said, I'm just throwing like crazy, you know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist here, <laughs> but, but I am throwing something crazy out there for everybody to sit and think about. Like you know, no, Brian, you're you're like Mark's like said it earlier. It's like Brian, you're you're crazy. That will never happen. And your remark, you're ninety nine point nine 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 percent right <laughs> but what what about that just you know itty bitty chance that all of a sudden it starts going that way well so. I, I mean it, the, the amount of money you express this is i i wouldn't surprise me to say you know them oh if we're digital people might charge a little bit more and you get it before the retail release or something but i think they shouldn't do that they shouldn't charge us more because guess what it doesn't cost them more yeah to not make the disc in the box and ship it to a store and pay the store money you know they're getting their full price of 60 bucks right for me instead of getting only 40 dollars from gamestop yeah because gamestop's you know game the, the, the these publishers don't make full 60 bucks off a game that you buy at walmart best buy gamespot wherever amazon you know they the the those stores make money off those games, so mm-hmm. the, pub, the publishers only get a portion. When they sell it direct to the customer, guess what? They get the full price, so they're making more money on their games by doing this. Right. So I, you know, I, I would if they start saying, well, we're gonna give you options to pay more to get it earlier. No, I'm. That would be an issue for me. Um, and I do, I do speak with my wallet. Um, I want to report back that. You know, I talked a, a, a week or two ago about EA Access. I have canceled my EA Access. What sucks about it is it just renewed in August. <laughs> yeah. I was so ticked. So I still have it for a year, yeah. but I've turned off the auto renewal. Um, so I will not be renewing it because I think this whole thing with Titanfall 2 um, is garbage. Right. So, and, and I still blame EA for that. And I'm. You know, they're not going to get my $50 a year or whatever it was. I was paying them 30 40 50 I don't know. But, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you got to speak with your wallet. Um, I did not, as much as I wanted to play Forza 3 this weekend, would have been great because I would have had, I could have had four days of it and then actually said, boom, on Tuesday, boom, I'm going right to XCOM. Right. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had to like, oh, I got two games. I'm dying to play. Which one do I play first? I could have gone right into the other one and played that for a day and then gone back to the other whatever. But to pay 20 bucks for it just wasn't worth it to me. Right. Like, I'm not going to, I got to speak with my wallet. I'm, I'll give you what I'm giving you. Yeah. 
And I'm and then I'm doing the same thing, like speaking with my wallet, because you asked me, like, "Hey, how was Destiny?" It's like I didn't buy the new Destiny expansion because I still haven't received the stuff that I paid for last time. And you know, I'm just like, I hate to be that way. It's killing me not to play that game. But I've already said, you know, I've said it on here, and I said it to my friends. I'm like, I'm not, I can't give a company money, and I can't defend them anymore when they're just literally crapping on customers, and then. You know, it, regardless if it's Xbox versus, you know, they have this exclusive deal with Sony or whatnot. You know, what are they going to do next time? Everybody wants Destiny 2 on PC. So if they go on PC, they're not going to be able to make these exclusive deals because you don't want to make the PC groups angry. Um, they're a little more vocal, I think. But, you know, they turned around and said, oh, this exclusive DLC was for a year. And then they turned around and said, well, no, we're going to make it two years. So it's like, I won't even get the stuff that I paid for in 2015. I won't even get it until 2017. And it's really yeah, nothing. Garbage. It's really, and, and, and to to be honest, I've even said, it's, like, it's the Crucible stuff I don't care because I don't play multiplayer. The guns are irrelevant because there's new guns out that are better. And the Strike or whatever, okay, yeah, it'd be nice to play the Strike. But that's really the only thing that's there. Like, even the stuff isn't that big of a deal. But they're going to turn around and hold it for another 12 months. That That's it, the thing. It's, it's, it's the principle of yeah, the it, fact that exactly. you yeah. paid them money for this content and they're holding that from you. They're not giving you what you paid for for two years. Right. And by the time it comes out, Bron, I'll about guarantee it's going to be a paid DLC they're going to release. You will probably not get it because you're going to be one of very few people that will even remember that you were supposed to get it. Oh, no, it'll it'll they'll release it, but the thing is, is Destiny 2 will be out. So Destiny 2 will be out because they're also holding stuff in the new DLC too. So not only was it the DLC from last year they're holding stuff, they held it for a year and then they turned it into two years. And the stuff that's in this DLC for Xbox players is held until next year. So the last two DLC packs, if you bought them both, you have content that's being held until 2017, which is when yeah. Destiny 2 will come out. So, the, I mean, yes, it is It is completely the And then the they'll principle. continue it in Destiny 2. They'll continue it there. Well, we'll, we'll see if they have to or if they do that. But that's the thing is you're right. It, it is the principle because you're saying, oh, thank you for your purchase. We know we're holding this to you because we made a deal with this other company. If you want that... You should have an uh, should have a PlayStation. Okay, fair enough. Because like I said, it's not that big of a deal. And then the year comes around, they're like, we're holding that stuff for another year, but please give us more money. And it's just yeah. like, no. I mean, who would ever do that on anything else? Anything else that you purchase, are you ever going to let the company be like, we're going to hold on to that for just a little bit longer, but um, do you want the new stuff too? Because we'll let you pay for that. And, even though you paid for the last stuff we haven't given you yet. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You know. So like when you go to McDonald's, they charge you like, you know, eight bucks for your Big Mac meal. But if you want to eat it in like the next five minutes, you gotta pay thirty. <laughs> Otherwise you wait half an hour. Yeah. Or something stupid like that. So it's the piggy. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go anywhere else. They wouldn't fly anywhere else. No, no. It wouldn't. It's like That's... going to get a big rib and they don't put barbecue sauce on it. Yeah. They'll get oh, the barbecue sauce tricks. next year. <laughs> That's yeah. cruelty. You know, and, and, and I, I I always said, and, and every hey. time this happened, I was like, okay, this isn't Bungie doing this. This is Activision. Activision made a deal with Sony, right? So I kept defending Bungie, kept defending Bungie, kept defending them. And I'm just like, you know what? If you guys aren't going to stand up for yourself and call out who's making this decision and you're just going to eat it, then I'm not defending you anymore. And I'm just going to say, yes, it's you. Because I, they're just laying there and taking it, too. Like, they're taking the, you know, the whole force of this, people saying, Bungie's crap, Bungie's crap, Bungie's crap. When I'm really, like I said, it's really Activision, probably. Most likely. But Bungie's just going to say, they're not saying anything about it. That's That's just... And I don't let people blame me for stuff I didn't do. I don't know, understand why they sit there and let people blame them for things that it's not it's not their say. They should just turn around and say, sorry, this wasn't our decision. It was Activision's. What's Activision going to do? Don't say that anymore or else we'll, uh, you know, not publish Destiny 2. Yeah, they're not going to say that, okay, guys? <laughs> like, you have 
Activision in your hand when it comes to Destiny. So, but we'll see what we'll see what Destiny Two when it comes out what they do with that because if they turn around and make the same deal, I'm not buying Destiny Two because I'm not going to go through this again. They should learn from their mistake. So, but so derailing this topic a little bit, where yeah. has the McRib been? Oh, jeez. All right. So uh, <laughs> have we had it this year? I no, I've not seen one in a long time. Because they usually have it on Monopoly time, which is like in September ish, isn't yeah. it? I thought it's coming up or something. It's you about go- time. You Google. Gotta stop talking about it, dude. I love those things. <laughs> yeah, you- Google. Hey, it. Remember that two four deal that they had oh. like for a buck extra? Yeah. Oh. That was overeating heaven. Yes. Yeah. So what right. I used to do is I would take the second one. And then I would take the meat from it, and I'd put it on the first one, so it'd be a double stack. <laughs> They'll probably just start making you... double double McRibs now. Ooh, so, <laughs> but um, buy that. <laughs> so four day early access for hundred bucks is bull crap in my mind. So yeah, oh totally. But, <laughs> all right. Hey, hey, now what I was gonna ask earlier, yeah, was that so I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the different um, versions of the game. And I figured I would do it later. Well, now is later. So I have to decide which one to get. So the ultimate is out the window. I, there's no way. I'm not getting it. So there's the base for 60, and then there's the deluxe for 80. Right. Now, for Forza Horizon 2, I got the deluxe version, and I got the VIP pack and everything like that. But yep. I don't know if it's worth it. Because, I mean, I get, okay, I don't care about the cars because I usually, like, drive one car and that's it unless they force me to drive something else. So I have my favorite cars and that's all I play. So it does not matter to me what car packs I get or anything. I don't care about that. Now, this whole VIP package, I know you get, like, the spins, you level up faster. That could be appealing, maybe. But getting like extra money or something like that doesn't matter to me either because I never buy anything because I just drive the one car that I have that I like. Well, is it worth it? How many hours? Like, did you did you even get up to was it level fifty or you know the gold wristband in Horizon Two? I don't remember. I think so. Because I mean, I I finished the game. Okay. Well, I think if you're gonna finish the game. Like me, I bought it. I liked the VIP because it does give you like bonus percentage of credits and uh, usually a bonus spin and stuff like that. Um, is it really required? Yeah, you get you get the VIP membership, you get some extra cars, and you get the Motorsport All Star Car Pack. But really, for me, it was just the VIP membership. Um, but it's not required. It really there's not really that much of a difference. You can save the money and. You know, if you're not really into it a whole lot, um, but you're probably going to play through the game, I'd say just get the $60 version. You're you're not really going to miss out on anything, you know. Um, I'm not even really sure really why I bought the extra. I kind of like the little VIP bump. But, uh, yeah. and I've, I've owned like every Forza game. So <laughs> it's just one of those, yeah, I got to I gotta give them the extra. Just to, I should be a VIP because I've bought every Forza title ever made. So, <laughs> you know, that's kind of more of like why I bought it. Just uh, I, I love the franchise, and especially Horizon. Um, I, I You're going to be fine with a $60 version if you want to save, save a few bucks. I mean, but doesn't the VIP let you level up faster or something? Does it give you some I, kind of multiplier on your points? I, I I believe it does. I'm trying to look up exact. It seems to me in the second one that it did, but I, I hate, I can't necessarily say for 100% certain. Um, I will look it up while we continue and um, yeah. see if I can get you an answer. Cause that's, that's the only compelling reason maybe to get it because that's something that you don't benefit from it. If you get it later. You know, you can buy car packs and stuff later and then maybe get up right. to the same level. But if you missed out on some kind of multiplier, then I mean that's pretty significant. Yeah, it's kinda like it's kinda like but, getting the ultimate version now, you know, for the four day um, 
for the four day Here. boost when you've already lost two days. Exactly. Okay, so VIP membership. Okay, so you get exclusive cars, new events, and even more. It says with Forza Horizon 3 VIP <laughs> membership, you get five exclusive cars the 2016 Lamborghini Aventador LP750 4SV, 2016 Conacer Regera, 2015 Ferrari F12 TDF, 2015 Ultima Evolution Coupe 1020, and the 2015 Ford Falcon GT F351. VIPs will receive additional benefits, including double wheel spin earnings, uh, access to exclusive online events, community mm -hmm. gifts, and more. It's your VIP membership today. So um, the I do remember that with a double wheel spin. So every time, I think every time you leveled up, you get a wheel spin that gets you credits you or get double cars, the money. But you get no, you actually get a second wheel spin. So you get to you get to do a wheel spin twice. And it and you does get seem cars to me or money, get, right? I could have swore you got bonus money as well. So if you earn money, I don't if it was it might have been doubled, but I don't really remember. Um, but it, I do believe you got a bonus because you were the VIP. So and it seemed to me that you leveled up quicker, but I really I can't find that in writing and I don't want anybody to come back and say, I didn't level up any faster. I, you know. Hmm. I, I'm trying to find like the full info on it if they have anything. Okay. So I'm digging around. And just gotta be careful not to hit a site that's gonna blast us with a video <laughs> ad. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems like uh, the regular version's good enough. All right. Okay. Well, the game's awesome, no matter what. Any yeah, version is really good. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so before uh, we're going to jump into community now, we have a winner for the Assassin's Creed Syndicate DLC code. Or did we, we have do? a winner for the previous? Oh, this is new. Okay, this, this one's new. Thing. You guys gave away the last thing last week, right? We gave away everything last week. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, this one, um, I need to post. So what I'm going to do, this is Mars Warlord 48 sent me a message over Xbox Live and said, hey, I've got, oh, where is it? Let me copy his message. I've got an Assassin's Creed Syndicate DLC code. Not sure what all it includes, but use it or give it away some way, either on the show or the website. So um, he's just like, he's not sure exactly what it is, but he's got a code. So I'm going to just, we're going to throw this out on our Twitch, give our Twitch guys a little love um, because they're dedicated and they're here. Not that we don't love our audio listeners, but usually the first one to download the audio gets it anyway. So <laughs> that's just, if you're catching it a week late, it would have been gone anyway. So. Right. Um, this is again. This is. I don't. I don't even know which version. I don't know if it's Xbox 360, Xbox One. I don't know. When you put the code in, it'll tell you. Um, he just said, he, and he's not sure what the DLC gives you. But I'm gonna throw the code into Twitch, and you guys have fun. Just uh, let us know if you did take the code in Twitch. Just let us know so we know that someone took it. And hopefully by the end of the show, if no one has claimed it in Twitch, then we will let the audio guys know that it's still available. So thanks, Mars. Appreciate that. Cool. All right. Uh, so voicemails, if you want to leave us a voicemail, go to thisxboxlife.com, click on send voicemail, uh, follow the prompts, send it in, and we'll play it on our show. Uh, you can also email us at contact at thisxboxlife.com. Dot com or go to this xbox life.com and click on contact and fill out a form and that will also get a hold of us uh, so we can read your email in the show and we have one this week so rob would you like to take it it would be my pleasure Brennan. okay so uh thank you for using our voicemail in today's show my brother richard and i are both patreon supporters from melbourne australia and would be delighted to take up your offer in a few weeks to come on your show to be of value um we would like to prepare a run sheet this is what i'm supposed to be reading right <laughs> uh that's what they sent in yeah okay uh where was I? a run sheet uh for a topic of conversation 
we might be able to add to. We'd like to prepare this. Um, okay. Uh, it would be great to add some further commentary to Forza 3, particular uh, to our yeah. experience of driving on. It would be great to add some further commentary to Forza 3, particularly our experience of driving uh, on this continent. Uh, yeah, we don't have to read off where yeah. where they live and stuff, but yeah, yeah. So their their email Australia. maybe it was a little more <laughs> directed toward us, you know, from when they yeah. subscribed. But yes, they did send us an email. I guess I should have read through a little bit more and said, should we put this on a show or not? <laughs> but no, it's it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, some commentary because you know something in these games like for example that are centered around Chicago. I'm always like checking everything out and, you know, I, you can see how realistic it is, you know, based on, you know, the areas that you know and such, and, you know, here they are, you know, with a setting in Australia when I don't think there's a whole lot of games set in Australia ever. Right. So it's, uh, it's cool to, you know, get that in, in their home area and, and plus for us to experience it just because uh, it's something you don't see it very often. So I think the big thing we need to let those guys know, um, Rob and Brun, you're going to reach out to them. Uh, if you could, I'd shoot them an email back tonight and reply. Get that, get the ball rolling for them. Yes, them I will. The I will be emailing them. So you'll be getting an email from me. So to get that set up, we got to figure it out. They're many, many hours ahead of all of us. Yeah, they're like <laughs> four, fourteen hours ahead of me. So. Yeah, well, we're going to work and try to schedule something around that so we might have an upcoming podcast on a different day um, to try to get our Australian friends on. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can uh, tweet us or uh, follow us on Twitter. It's uh, um, thisxboxlife.com slash Twitter or twitter.com slash thisxboxlife. Uh, Facebook group is uh, thisxboxlife.com slash facebook we'll get you over to our group it is uh a closed group but just send in a request and uh, we just kind of look at a couple things and approve and i think that's about it and we're into new releases sure hey did we want to talk about the other domain real quick i don't know if it really matters um so yeah we can mention it i guess yeah so what what happened was uh Moronic Cow, who was also TXL, uh, part of TXL. um, And that other show. Well, and the other show, which was called Xbox Podcast. All right, we we can say it now. It was Xbox Podcast at the time. That's where uh, Moronic Kyle, Moronic Cow, and Mark and myself started. Um, You know, we were there for a good 60 shows, I think, for like a year or so. Um, I was almost 90. Well, those guys were 90. I was was off at 60. Oh, Okay. So, um, what happened is Kyle watched Xbox podcast domain and he snatched it when it became available. And, uh, what he did is he just got a hold of us like, Hey, do you guys want this? So we have it now. So we also, we are this Xbox life, but we also have Xbox So back uh, again. Yes. Back again. After what? Back to the squat. Roots, man. Yeah, a back squatter to... had it for what eight years. Uh, I think Kyle had it for one year. So that yeah, one. the the person squatted on it for like six years or something like that. So, but yeah, so we 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 got that back now. If you go to xboxpodcast dot com, I think it just kicks over to txl dot com. So or it the does. Xbox Live. Yes, it does. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. We we yeah, what absolutely. we need to do is we need to get Kyle on here. We need to get Kyle on here for an episode. Why? I miss no, I'm just him. Kidding. I know. Oh, I'm, come on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Kyle. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Kyle probably doesn't even listen to us anymore. He's too uh, busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. I wouldn't that mind. It would be great that. to have him on. Again. Yeah, we had him on a while ago. Mm-hmm. We just brought him on and said, "Hey, you want to record a show with us today?" And he's like, "Yeah." So, but uh, yeah, we'll have to do that. That's a good idea. I'll reach out to him see if he wants to do that. But, uh, yep. All right. So now what do we got for releases? Retail releases. 
this week for Xbox One. There's only one game that matters. That's Forza Horizon 3. That's it. Okay. This is the last end of the episode, right? <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Xbox One. We have FIFA I'll 17. Hot after you. <laughs> XCOM 2 and Forza Horizon 3. For the 360, we have FIFA 17. Uh, games with gold are um, still up for a little while longer for uh, one more week here before they change again. Just as a reminder for Xbox One, you have a couple more days to grab Earthlock Festival Festival of Magic and Assassin's Creed Chronicles China just started recently. On the Xbox 360, the current game is Mirror's Edge. And don't forget, that one is backwards compatible. And it's also a pretty darn good game as well. And then lastly, if you make any purchases on Amazon, uh, if you're a Prime member and all that good stuff, if you make a lot of purchases on there, please remember to use our affiliate link. Uh, that's uh, can, That can be found at thisxboxlife.com forward slash Amazon, or you can just go to our website, click the Amazon logo. It'll take you over to Amazon where you can just uh, purchase whatever you want. Uh, we get a small finder's fee for sending you their way. It does not cost you anything extra, and uh, it's a great way to help support the show. And then also, if you're on iTunes, find us on there and give us a five-star review. The more five-star reviews uh, that we get, um, uh, the more chances of our of us becoming a featured show and growing the community. And uh, that's about it. All right. Cool. And uh, Warlord, uh, just so you know, Gunny Chief has said thank you to you for the code. Yep. Uh, he has redeemed the code for your DLC. Thank you. Cool. All right, guys. I think that's all we got. It's good topics. I had a good time this day. Oh, yeah. I was out last week. It's good to be back. So, good times. But uh, do you guys have anything else? Nope. Nope. Wrapping nope. it up? All right. Well, yep. everybody. Yeah, you guys better better do good next week. I'm gonna be watching. Oh yes, Mark will not be with us next week. That's right. So he'll so be with expect, us. Expect the show to take a nose dive. With us. <laughs> so. All right. Well, everybody, thank you for coming out. Thank you for listening and and joining in with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back next next week. So with that, I am Brun BJ Swick thirty three. I'm Rob Olson, as Priestar. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch y'all next week. RKK Wingman 709, taking off.